Hey everyone, today we'll be making fettuccine carbonara all from scratch. I recently saw a YouTube short on making this and I thought I could give it a shot, especially since I had all the ingredients on hand that day. First things first, I'll be making the pasta dough. I'll be mixing together eggs, flour, olive oil, and salt. For the flour, I'll be using double zero flour, which is what I usually use for pizza, but I will make pasta with this today instead of the usual all-purpose flour. I'm going to let my stand mixer do all the work, letting it run on low speed for 8 minutes while I work on separating my egg yolks. Now I'm making progress with the egg yolks, but I had one break on me. But that's okay, it's not that big a deal. Time to cook the pancetta by adding it to a cold pan and then placing it over medium heat. This method allows the fat to render slowly, which we will need to add into the carbonara sauce later on. Now that my pasta is done kneading, I'm going to form it into a ball, wrap it in plastic wrap, and let it rest for 30 minutes right on the counter. After I wrapped it up, my pancetta is done cooking, so I'm going to set that to the side, and then I'm going to strain and reserve that fat to use for later. At this point in the process, the pancetta is done cooking, the dough is resting, so now it's time to shred the cheese. I could use my food processor to shred this wedge in just a few seconds or I could take the next 10 minutes to shred it by hand. Now since I don't feel like cleaning my food processor just for one use, I might as well shred the cheese by hand. I mean, there's still about 20 minutes left to let the dough rest. Once the cheese is all shredded, it's time to split the pasta dough into four and flatten them by hand, right before flattening it using the pasta machine. I must say, I like how this dough is much smoother than the other ones I've made before, and I'm sure it's because I used double zero flour. After I've gotten my fettuccine on the other side of the pasta machine, I will let them hang on the oven handle. I saw this neat trick online and I thought it'd be useful for me since I don't have pasta hangers. But once I've made all of my fettuccine, I will cook it in salted boiling water for a few minutes until it's al dente. Then I'll strain it and reserve that pasta water. Now time for the main event, making that carbonara sauce. I'm going to place a heat proof bowl on top of a pot of water, creating a bain marie. Once that bowl is hot enough, I'll mix in the egg yolks, shredded cheese, and half a cup of that pasta water, along with black pepper and reserved fat. I'm going to whisk until it's at a creamy consistency. At this point, the sauce is looking good, and it's time to assemble the pasta. But for some reason, I didn't think so when I cooked this, and I added more pasta water. I can't really recall why I did that, maybe because I thought the cheese wasn't melted all the way? I forget. I spent another 15 minutes trying to get that creamy consistency once again, but I couldn't get it to work so I ended up transferring it to direct heat in order to reduce it. It 
it was looking like I could still save the sauce by reducing it and adding heavy cream until it has thickened once again. I figured that would be better instead of throwing it away. It's finally time to assemble after saving the sauce, right after I mix the pasta and sauce together. I'm going to add the pancetta right on top along with black pepper and from there it's time to eat. There you have it, homemade fettuccine carbonara from scratch. Despite a few hiccups like adding too much pasta water to the sauce and having to reduce it, the end result was still delicious. I learned a lot from today and I'm sure I can make this better the next time, now that I know what to expect. That is it for me in today's video. Thank you so much for watching and remember, here at our virtual table, we make this a place to inspire and learn. If this video inspired you to make this, or if there's a certain way that you make this dish, let me know in the comments down below. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and hit that bell to stay tuned for next week's video where I make ube leche flan cake. See you all in the next one.